Hello, history hounds and megafauna maniacs. Welcome back to the channel, where we dig up the most mind-blowing creatures from Earth's past. Today, we're going on an epic safari through ancient Africa to meet five megafauna that were so colossal they'd make modern animals look like they're playing in a sandbox. Get ready for a journey so packed with facts, your brain will need a vacation. Let's dive into the world of prehistoric Africa. We're starting this time traveling tour with Dinotherium. Let's talk about Dinotherium, the terrible beast. But don't let the name fool you, they were just terribly large. These giants roamed Africa from around 9.5 to 3.5 million years ago, standing an impressive 4.5 meters tall and weighing around 14 tons. Now, here's a fact that'll twist your mind. Their downward tusks, which could grow to over a meter long, might have been used not only for digging up roots, but also for fighting off predators or even showing off during mating rituals. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. There's evidence suggesting that they might have even had a complex social structure living in small family groups similar to modern elephants. Imagine these behemoths not just wandering around the lush prehistoric landscapes of Kenya, Uganda and Ethiopia, but engaging in social activities, maybe even mourning their dead like their modern relatives. However, as the climate shifted, turning their lush habitats into woodlands and grasslands, and with the arrival of early humans with their new hunting techniques, Dinotherium's days were numbered. From being the architects of their environment, bending forests to their will, digging for water in dry seasons, to eventually becoming extinct. Their story is a testament to the dynamic interplay between species and their environment, and of course, the relentless march of time. Next on our megafauna journey, we've got Civitarium. Enter the Civitarium, the four-horned giraffe, a creature so unique, it's like if a giraffe decided to go to a costume party dressed as a deer. They lived from 7 million to 1 million years ago, standing about 2.5 meters tall at the shoulder, with a horn set up that was the talk of the prehistoric town. Their large antlers may have not just been used for defence, but also for elaborate displays to attract mates. Essentially the prehistoric version of a peacock's tail. These creatures were probably well adapted to a transitional environment, capable of both browsing on leaves from trees and grazing on ground level vegetation, showcasing their versatility. They may have lived in small groups, navigating through the woodlands that were slowly turning into savannas. Yet, as the climate continued to change, making their preferred habitats scarcer, and as human activities began to impact their lives, Civitarium couldn't keep up with the evolving world. From being the fashion icons of their time, to fading into extinction, their story reminds us of the delicate balance of survival and the impact of environmental shifts. They're a lesson in how even the most adapted species can struggle when their world changes around them. Now, let's get to a heavyweight of the African plains, Pelorovus. Here comes Pelorovus Antiquus, the giant African buffalo, with horns that could serve as a natural archway. They roamed the African plains from around 12,000 to 4,000 years ago, with horns that spanned over 3 meters. Here's a fact that'll knock your socks off. These buffaloes weren't just big, they may have been key players in shaping the savanna landscape, managing vegetation through their grazing habits, essentially preventing the spread of bushes and maintaining the grasslands. But there's more to their story. Evidence suggests that these giants may have migrated seasonally, following the rains for fresh grazing lands, making them the original long-distance travellers of the animal kingdom. Their large herds could have been a sight to behold, moving across the landscape 
like a massive living river. Again, what is already becoming a bit of a pattern in this video, with the rise of human hunting becoming even more efficient with time. Combined with climatic changes, these majestic creatures eventually face their end. Pelerovis shows us the might and the fragility of nature's giants. And let's not forget the even larger buffalo cousin, Sincerus Antiquus. Sincerus Antiquus, the even bigger brother in the buffalo world, living from 12,000 to 4,000 years ago. This buffalo's size would have made it a true titan of the plains. It has also been theorised that their heavy grazing could have influenced not only the types of grasses that grew, but also how they evolved, favouring those who could bounce back quickly from being eaten. Archaeological evidence also suggests that they may have been even more social than modern buffalo, living in massive herds not just for protection, but for sharing resources and knowledge, making them the original community builders of the animal kingdom. Yes, like their cousin Pelerovis, they faced the same adversaries, human hunting and climate change. And now we're wrapping up our tour with a bang. The antelope with the coolest horns, Megalotrigus, also known as the giant hartebeest. Megalotrigus, the giant hartebeest with these lyre shaped horns that were the envy of prehistoric grasslands, living in the Pliocene to Pleistocene. Unlike many antelopes were only males of horns, both male and female Megalotrigus were equipped with these impressive structures, making them equal in the fashion department. But here's where it gets even more intriguing. They were likely among the largest antelopes ever to grace the African plains grazing in vast numbers that could have influenced the very dynamics of the grasslands. As usual, it's those pesky human hunters that were a major cause in this animal's extinction. Since Africa is the only continent today with a vast array of what we could consider megafauna, I wanted to look back at prehistory and see what was there before. These megafauna were the original giants of Africa, influencing the landscapes, ecosystems and even our imagination. Their stories are not just about their size and uniqueness, but about the lessons they teach us on adaptation, survival and the impact of change. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into prehistoric Africa, give us a like, hit the subscribe button for more journeys through time and ring that bell for notifications. Which extinct creature should we explore next? Give your thoughts below. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, history isn't just old, it's a wild adventure. Catch you on our next prehistoric escapade.